everybody. Hey, everyone. What's up? Welcome to Thursday night. Uh, let's see who's in the house tonight. Smooth Jazz family. Hey, how are you? Um, hope everyone's doing fine. It's uh, completely crappy weather here in New York. Seems like every other week I'm uh, like in the remnants of a tropical storm or something. But anyway, it's all good. And um, glad to glad to be here with everyone. I've got an awesome special guest tonight. He's an old friend of mine. It's a super awesome saxophone player, and we have some very interesting things in common that we can talk about, uh, one of which is that we were both bar mitzvahed, uh, but it gets more interesting from there. So uh, anyway, uh, hey, there's Anna Maria. How are you, my friend? Terry, what's up, brother? And uh, Joseph, how are you? Good to see you, man. And um, let's see who else is coming in before. I'm going to do my usual move. I'm going to play. Something to start off the evening. Pablo, how are you, my friend? Ecuador is in the house. Digging that. Love that photograph. Big tenor front and center looking at me. Very nice. Gary, what's up? How are you, my friend? Richard. I call Richard the king of late night because where he is, it is like actually really late night. I think it's, I mean, we've been changing times, you know, uh, uh, with, you know, daylight savings time, what have you. But I think it's pretty much three in the morning where Richard is. And uh, and he's here every week, which is just mind blowing. Super awesome. There's my friend Andy Brush. What's up? Hey, Glenn. How are you, John? How are you, Jared? Dolly, Peter, John Savage is here again. Fantastic. Love having the saxophone players in the house. I love all of you in the house, but definitely uh, got a special place in my heart for the saxophone players for obvious reasons. So anyway, all right. Well, look. Why don't we uh, Why don't we get to it? I'm I'm saying, hey, Ralph. How are you, Renee? What's going on? saying Grand Rapids, love Grand Rapids. I was there uh, within the last couple of years with Chris Bodie, beautiful town. And uh, there's Kathy from the Jersey's in the house. What's up? Dante, how are you, my friend? 2 a.m. in the UK. All right, Richard. Well, you're one hour less awesome than I thought you were, but it's still kind of unbelievable that you're up at 2 a.m. Fantastic. Hey, there's Garth again. How are you, Bob? Nice to see you. South Jersey is in the house. Fantastic. You know, everyone knows I'm from Philly. So South Jersey is kind of, uh, you know, that's like Philly Metro. It counts where I'm coming from. Andy Wolf is in Tokyo. Awesome. Miguel is here from Mexico. Fantastic. So great to get people from around the planet. Hey, Jay. Jay Canley is here. First time checking in. I'm great. I'm going to do my best for you, my friend. Um, anyway, all right. So let me, uh, a Andy Wolf's got a nice picture of him playing tenor. That's fantastic. Beautiful. Look at that. Um, Frank, what's up, buddy? More South Jersey. Frank is from Vineland. He's an old college friend of mine. So um, anyway, uh, let me let me just hop to it, man. Let me do my thing. I'm going to play a song and then uh, we'll get on to the special guest. So this is from my new album, Higher. Those of you that have picked it up already, thank you very much. If you haven't, I hope you'll be uh, motivated to pick it up or check it out on Spotify or uh, anything like that. So um, I'm not going to tell you what tune this is. Some of you will recognize it if you're familiar with the record. Um, but I'm going to play a little bit of alto and I'm going to click some buttons and I will get right back to you. All right, cool. Hang on for a sec.
Oh, hi. Suddenly I'm here. <laughs> but I still can't hear Andy. Can't hear you, brother. <laughs> Can people hear me and not Andy? I'm getting some what's up. I don't know if anyone can hear me, but I can hear myself. Can can you guys hear me? So Daniel, Daniel has taken over uh my my Facebook uh account. And so apparently I'm getting I'm getting instructions from him to play a song. So uh it, and it's funny because you know Andy has a, a an amazing new CD called Higher. And and I was a, a little bit um, I was a little bit annoyed that that he 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 took that title because my new album is going to be called High Ish. Um, anyway, not really. <laughs> and and so now I you know I, I've always wanted to play. I've always wanted to play just like Andy, um, and now I know how. And I'll, and I'll I'll demonstrate. Hold on a second. This is great. See, I could do that too. <laughs> Still can't hear you, Andy. I'm taking over your show.
back yet? can't hear you, brother. You can't hear me either because I forgot to press a button. Where's your button? You're going to have to, you're going to have to like hold up cue cards with questions so I can answer them. <laughs> well, until Andy gets back, how are we all doing tonight? Are we good? Let me tell you something about Andy Snitzer. I'm going to tell. I'm going to tell the uh, Andy Snitzer story, since uh, Andy's you know indisposed and I can't hear him. Can 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 anyone can anyone else hear Andy, or is it just me? Am I like being you know selectively tuning out Andy, or is that like a real thing? No, I can't. No one can hear Andy. Bummer, man. It's like this is his show. I'm just supposed to be like, you know, flying through and like, you know, lighting up the room and leaving. But now, now I got to, you know, kind of handle the heavy lifting. So uh, anyway, the Andy Snitcher story is this. This is how I met Andy. Uh, this was many, many years ago, like many, many years ago. And it was in uh, Norfolk, Virginia at the Omni Hotel. And there was a, there was a concert going on and, uh, uh, I was playing with an artist named Bob Mamet and uh, Andy was playing with Philippe Sace. I can't believe I remember all these details. And I checked in. I was wearing a black turtleneck and jeans and carrying three saxophones on my back. I had dark hair and, uh, look, and look much younger than this, but semi this. And so I go up to my room and I unpack my stuff and uh, go down to sound check. And uh, when I get to sound check, I realize that I had uh, I had forgotten something in my room. So I go back upstairs to my room, and uh, the door is kind of ajar. And I'm like, well, "What's going on here?" And I look inside, and there's a uh, there's another dude with a, a black turtleneck and jeans on, carrying three saxophones on his back in my room. So apparently, when Andy checked in, somehow they just thought that he was me and gave him the key to my room. And so Andy and I staring at each other in this room that was, you know, kind of up for grabs at this point is how we met. And so, uh, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the Andy Snitzer story. And then we figured out that we had all these things in common. And the, one of the things that we had in common was that, uh, let's see, uh, he and my brother have the same birthday and the same year. Okay. Does anyone hear me? No, I'm sorry, Andy. I can't hear you. You can't. Can you hear me or not? <laughs> Come on, man. Can you? I can totally hear you, man. Oh, God. That was, I, I don't even know how to Thank describe God. Thank that, God that, you're that here, man. Like, I was, that was like, I, that was, that, I, I'm, listen, you know how to hold your own, so I'm not worried about that. But you didn't sign up for this. My my Lord. Man, no, um, man. I was I was bombing. I mean, these people were all dude, about to no, leave. No, 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 no. I heard, I heard you crush the song. So this is this is like the definition of like professional uh, inaction, right? Like the host goes down and uh, <laughs> the guest comes in, runs his track, crushes the saxophone performance, takes over the MC while I restart my entire computer. Unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, wow. so that's Steve Cole right there. I mean, that, that was not fun for me. I have to tell you, that was about uh, one of the worst experiences I've had in, in, uh, in, you know, in memory, in the recent memory. But uh, in any wow. event, um, yeah, something with my UAD interface, man. I, I looked down and noticed that it was just like the lights were like in like, you know, Picasso mode. Like they were oh, like, wow. in, they were in Dolly. They were all like wrong and nothing was going to happen there unless I restarted. So I'm not, wow. I'll, I'll, that, I'll, I was trying to play the tune Miracle from my new record, Higher. Folks, I'm going to play it next week. And I, I'm not even going to mess with it anymore, but we'll, we're back and we can, we can do, uh, we can do this chat part, which is great. So anyway, uh, Steve, you, you sound unbelievable, man. You just you just crushing that stuff, crushing it. And uh, let, let let me talk. Let, really, yeah, really, sounded, I mean, so, I mean, really, sounds so good. I'm not, I'm not, I don't bullshit up here, man. I was saying the same thing to Kaz last week. Like when I'm when I'm my I'm being complimentary. I mean it. I am not that guy, 
right? Okay. East, East right. Coast, I, East Coast. We don't sugarcoat. No, so, you're, you're not. You're not one of the. Uh, you're not part of the. Hey, you sound great, man. Club. I'm. I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy. <laughs> so, so you, you, you. That was unbelievable. Like you literally like took over. The show was just like teetering. You came in, you hit the the, the, the third <laughs> deck right with one swing, and uh, wow, unbelievable. But hey, man. So did you, let me tell you the quick story. Did you tell any of the stories while I was uh, dark? Yeah, I was just. I was. Yeah. No. Yeah. I was. It's funny because I was just telling the story. I, I got to the part where we were looking at each other and trying to figure out why this other dude who kind of had exactly the same hair in exactly there. so so uh, we yeah. were in, we were in Virginia or something I'll I'll just do my version of it right we're in Virginia something like that I, I check into North the hotel Virginia Norfolk Virginia I check into the hotel they give me a key I go up the elevator I get out the elevator I start walking down the hallway and walking towards me on the hallway is me right like a dude of a certain size like dark hair carrying a tenor saxophone on his back. And it's a small little hallway. We kind of pass each other. Like we tried, we worked not to brush it up against each other because it's like a little hotel hallway. And I was like, hey, and he's like, hey, right. And we keep rolling. I get down to the room that I'm checked into, right? I open the door. I open the door and the room is occupied, right? There's a smoldering cigarette in the room. So you were, you were in the room. You were in the room already, man. No, 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 no. Am I, 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 am I remembering no, it wrong? You're remembering it wrong. I checked that, in. That, that, wasn't a, that wasn't a cigarette, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm not even going to touch that. I don't care what it was. So something was a smoking out of a glass. But anyway, the point is, I, I check into a hotel, and this has never happened to me ever before or since. They give me a key. I go up, and the room is occupied, right? And it's occupied with this dude, but he's already down the hallway, so I don't know that. I just know that I'm in a room that – is already occupied. Uh, anyway, long story short, we figure all this out, and and later we met, and and you were like, just by virtue of me being older, I think you were like, you know, I'm aware of who you are, and blah 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 blah. We had a chat and started figuring out all this simpatico stuff that we had. Yeah, both both having an MBA and and both having been bar mitzvahed and and what have you, and <laughs> uh, and uh, both playing the tenor sax. But that that was the beginning of like a. a long you know, friendship and association where, uh, yeah. we, but it, it's, it was such a wild, wild way to meet somebody. I like, I literally, it's burned into my brain. I will never forget walking down that hallway and seeing you come at me. I'm like, what is up? Is this a mirror? <laughs> <laughs> is there a mirror in the middle of this hotel room hallway or what? Yeah, man. So, uh, that was, anyway, that was uh, that was but, uh, but great to have you. So, Hey man, so like, talk to me. I, I can I can talk about like who who I think your influences are, but tell tell me who your people were when you were studying because there, there's so much good juju in that in that sound and style. Who, who <laughs> were your Who were your guys? Man, you're being really nice to me today, man. I, I'm, I'm nice, nice to you whenever we hang out, man. Don't, <laughs> I know, you're right. Don't, don't, don't tell them you're making it sound like I'm usually an no, asshole. No, 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 that's not true. That's not true, man. You shared your you shared your cinnamon Danish with me in St. Paul, so like you're 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 you know mishpucha. So anyway. Right so, um, you know, when, when it, it's funny because, um, my dad, my dad got me started on listening to, to saxophone players. He was a saxophone player yeah. and, uh, and I inherited a really, a really kick-ass horn from him. And that was a cool thing too. And, um, but I also inherited like a, a love for, you know, for jazz. And we used to listen to, uh, NPR because my dad, my dad had three jobs. He had to work a lot. Um, and, um, we spent a lot of time together in the car together because what I would do like his jobs that weren't like his day job, the, all this, all his, you know, he was a musician. So he had, you know, gigs. And then he had this right. other job as a, as a speaker. And he, so I, and I would just go with him in the car and we would listen to NPR. And he was always like, all right, you know, we play this game. Like who's the trumpet player? Who's the tenor player? Who's right. the alto player? It's like, you know, started to develop this kind of idea that um, like trumpet players all sound different. And, and tenor players all sound different. So I, I literally, it was like, I'm a mutt because, you know, when, when we were listening to music and what I was influenced by was just like everything that I was listening to on the radio with my dad. And so, but I started, I started affiliating with, you know, big tenor sounds, right. you know, uh, you know, uh, 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 Johnny Griffin, you know, I get that cat, completely. A, I get a, that a, completely. A yeah. Chicago cat, you yeah. know, yeah, uh, you know, Lester Young, um, you know, just, just, you know, big, you know, big tenor sounds. And then I, you know, uh, uh, started to, um, 
you know, get into more contemporary stuff. So I kind of followed that, you know, their lineage, like, like the, the lineage of the more contemporary cats, like Grover and, and, and Kirk and, you know, right. uh, and, and, and then even back like to, you know, Junior Walker, you know, yeah. Again. <laughs> you know, Again. And so I was all over the map and then I discovered, you know, David Sanborn. And then it, that, that just kind of freaking blew my mind. It's just like, wow, the saxophone has never sounded like that. And I want to, I want to make something sound anywhere close to that, you know? Right. right. Um, so yeah, and then and then of course I discovered Michael Brecker, and then that was the first time I sold my saxophone. Luckily, I was able to buy it back. Uh, <laughs> we all sold our saxophones. We <laughs> but you know, um, yeah, I mean it's it's really just all over the map. Cannonball Adderley drives me crazy. I can't stop listening to to Cannonball. Right. I okay. can't, you know. Uh, yeah, so you know, it's kind but of. The, but the interesting thing is, you you went uh, you went to Northwestern where I went for a year, and Dave Sanborn went for a year, and I went there. Yeah. Dave Sanborn went there for a year, and uh, you know, as it turns out, that's a classical saxophone program. So yeah, I, I kind of I got there and sort of figured out what was going on, and then I left there after a year. But you hung around, right? Yeah, I hung around there, and I actually, you know, I, I it, it's you know, I, it, and it pains me because um, <laughs> you know, I did not, I did not um, stay in the music school. Right. I studied. I studied with uh, a Hemke student for uh, about you know three years right. before I, I got to Northwestern. And I studied with Fred Hemke, and I went there to study with Fred Hemke. Had I known Andy Snitzer had gone there, I would have gone <laughs> there because Andy Snitzer went there. But and, I didn't and know Dave that Sanborn had... and Dave Sanborn. Had you known that, right? Uh, anyway, <laughs> so, so but you know and... I. <laughs> But yeah, I was I was so into classical saxophone playing, man. It was like, and I still am. I still love that. I mean, and and so you know, uh, a lot of the saxophone players that I was inspired by in those years where you're like aware of that kind of thing right. were classical cats. You know, I would listen right. to Harvey Patel, and I would listen to Jean Marie Londex, and I would listen to Marcel Mule, and I would listen to, you know, uh, Wayne Richards was my teacher. I still right. think he has the best saxophone sound on the planet on the alto saxophone playing classical. Uh, you know saxophone so um eugene rousseau would yeah. drive me crazy i mean yeah. like i mean you know and i actually got to meet eugene man i was actually i was going to go back and do my doctorate in music and i wanted to study with with eugene because it just so happened that he was teaching at the university of minnesota and so i was going to wow. go back and study with him and, and unfortunately what happened was he you know as at the time when we were like you know i had a lesson with him and he was encouraging me and then he retired I'm just like, oh. <laughs> he heard you were coming. He got out I of know. the game. Yeah. So, I, so I, had, I had to get a doctorate in something else, you know, which, yeah. uh, you know, it, that, you know. I well, guess you know, you're, 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 you're a doctor either way. It's impressive, man. You know. Yeah. What are, you know, what are they, what are they, what do they call the dumbest, the dumbest student in the doctoral cohort? I don't know. The doctor. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He's still a doctor. Right? Oh, that's you? Come on. I, I doubt that. I doubt that. I doubt that, Bertie. I don't think you get a, a graduate degree from the University of Chicago and uh, and stupid your way through it. I'm, I'm, eh. not, I'm not sure about that, but, you know. I, University I, I, of I, Chicago. What have they ever done? I don't, I don't think that's a thing, really. <laughs> so, uh Anyway, well, that, that's 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 cool. Like I I told I, I I totally get the Johnny Griffin thing. I get that layer. I have, I hear Kirk in there. I, I get all of that. Um, but. Uh, but you know, super super groovy to hear you play, and uh, yeah, and, thanks, and, and 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 again, thanks for saving my ass. So, uh, <laughs> um, hey, so out there in in the uh, in the chat sphere, do we have any specific questions for my guest Steve Cole? Because um, I'd like to, I'd like it'd be great if you guys got you guys have questions, or you have any like you know stuff you can leak, like embarrassing stories or what uh, stuff <laughs> I'd like to get a hold of because I like to roll like that, but. Um, all right. Well, if not, then we'll just talk. And this is, this is a pretty funny, Terry's here every, every week. Let me just click on this, this comment. Long ghost notes. Yeah. I was playing some long ghost notes. <laughs> Good one, man. Good one. Um, all right. Well, uh, you know, I, I, I'd love to hear you. Uh, I, I was planning to spin a song of yours from my rig, but at this point I'm just kind of like, you know, hands off. Are, are you in a mm. position to, to spin neo soul from where you are is that is that something that you can get oh, yeah. pretty I mean, easily? You mean you, you mean like the uh, the actual thing, or you want me to play? Yeah, it? no, I will. I mean, you, you, want, you want you want me to play way, the, like the, the actual studio recording well, of that? Either one. I, I kind of enjoy like like hanging out uh, uh, 
like like I've been doing that last week, just like like hanging out and listening to a cut from somebody while we're both in the space, right? Digging it. Yeah, so, man. But but you're you're welcome to play it too. I mean, no, you, no, whatever I don't you want to do. I, I mean, I mean, you just. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to overstay my welcome. You, you completely were crushing. Not at it. all, man. Let me let me see. Let me see if uh, if anyone actually uh, you know uh, carries. My, you know, hold on. I'll, I'm typing Steve Cole into Apple Music and I'm like, <laughs> see what you get. And you know the messed up hey. thing is, like, you got it. I think I do. All right. So you you know I'm totally I'm completely a gear guy, right? Like I'm completely I know you. I'm are. completely that's that guy, and, and like just, that, that's just, why I was so surprised. It's just nuts to have that happen. But um, all right, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually do this, man. I'm gonna do this live. And now it wants. Oh, really? Yeah. I, now I'm being the gear guy. Now I can't. All right, Spotify. You know. You know what? Apple. Sorry, guys, but yeah, let's, not, let's go to Spotify. Let's spin it on Spotify. You'll make your point uh, point three cents, right? I wish I wish it was point three. That would be, <laughs> that would be awesome. If it is, is it point oh three? I, I, I can't. I, I, don't know. I think it's, I think it's I think it's point oh 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 three. Oh, maybe. oh boy, yeah. It's a lot of zeros. Hey, look at I'm the first one that comes up. I Beautiful. Know, awesome. Awesome. This is this is Neo Soul from Steve Gratitude Out 2019.
And that's that. Awesome. I'll help. The, I'll help the fade out. You know. Thank you, man. Thank you. So you know, every week I've been talking about like the ten thousand hours thing, right? And folks, like that that altissimo control that you hear there, like that's uh, that's the ten thousand hours. And and that you know, I respond to that kind of thing in saxophone players. I like hearing uh, the study and the discipline and and the sweat and the work ethic and uh, that that arrives at execution execution like that. It's not it's not possible without that input. So. Um, that's that's awesome to hear and and get, again it sounds great man big hook on that tune nice groove yeah that's a that's a that's a Dave Mann special yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it sounds like Dave in there so <laughs> we've got uh, we got a couple questions for you here like we're gonna geek out on the saxophone thing a little bit folks and Matt Corey's talking about your mouthpiece Did that oh yeah that's a, so what's up that's a that's a that's a new that that is also a Dave Mann special. <laughs> He stole his mouthpiece. I did. Well, so, you know, you know, it's funny because I've been playing this Gardala for a long, long time. Yeah. And I've also been working with David Mann for a long, long time. And he, there, there was something I really liked about that mouthpiece, but there's <laughs> something that he really didn't like about it. So, you know, it, 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 it's really funny because he, 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 would, he would always kind of like when I was over there, we'd be talking about saxophone stuff. You'd be like, Hey man, you know, I got this new mouthpiece. You should check this out. And I was like, oh no, I'm cool with my mouthpiece, man. But that, but that's really cool of you to, you know, be thinking about me. And what I realized, what he was trying to do is try to get me to literally change mouthpieces. <laughs> yeah. He was, he was like, he was basically saying in a super nice way, like, I don't really take your mouthpiece. Yeah. <laughs> right? He's like, I, I'm having, I'm having, I'm having, I'm having trouble. It's hard, it's hard for me to mix your sound with that mouthpiece. So yeah. That's totally like, what he was like, saying. Try something else. It only, it only, it only, it only took me like 19 years of that to actually be like, you know, like it only, it only, it only took you like 10 mentions for you, for it to dawn on you. Oh. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but you know, here's the thing: I couldn't say no because it was like his signature mouthpiece. It's a, right. a, a Stefan SK, and right. he has the it's the Dave Man Origin. So I'm like, well, right. I can't say no. It's got your name on it and shit. Right. So, right. I mean, stuff. Well, so, but you you played dumb pretty successfully for for a while, right? Yeah. But, but yeah. then you figured it out. Then you had to play it. But right. the thing is, is like he lets me play this mouthpiece. I'm like, holy crap! This mouthpiece is really this feels great. Right. And 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 then you know he's like, okay, it was kind of like, give me that mouthpiece back. I'm like, no. <laughs> well, like what what the hell? Twenty years you've been trying to get me to change mouthpieces. I finally changed mouth. Like like I like a mouthpiece that you recommend, and now you want it back. This is bullshit. <laughs> No, he just—he's so, lending it to you while you made the record, so he yeah, makes your sound, and was, then was, then you're then you're out, and you're back on your own. Absolutely, yeah, it was yeah. completely about him. It was completely <laughs> about just like I want you to have this mouthpiece as long as it is in my interest for you to have this, but then right. I'm taking it back. That's right. mine now. Right. Right. So I had to get my own, and uh, and and I did, and and I really love it. It took me a minute to to kind of you know commit to it, but I I right. it, it really feels. Uh, Feels really good. It sounded yeah. great, man. It sounded, sounded really great. So thank you. So uh, yeah. So hey, so let, let, let's wind back and, and talk to me about how you uh, how you did your thing, like how how you got started. I know something about your your early career, but um, how, who you played with when you were back when you were a young man for all of us <laughs> so long ago, and uh, and, and how you how you found your way to making uh, to making records and being a solo artist. And, uh, you yeah. Know, so what what was that progression like? Um, well, you know, uh, way, way back, like when I was in band and stuff, I knew that I was probably, uh, destined to do one of two things, either like, you know, be a musician or, you know, I don't know, do time because I, I kept, I kept on, I, I, kept, time. Yeah, I kept on getting, I, I don't kept see on, that, but okay. I know, right. I don't see you as being good in prison, but anyway, go on. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, it, it, I, I kept getting kicked out of band. I got kicked right. out of band all the time right. because I did not want to play those ridiculous, like, you know, alto parts in the middle of the, you know, the, the harmony. I wanted to play the melody. The trumpet right. players got to play the melody all the time. I don't want to play the melody. So I kept, play, I kept playing the melody no matter what. And, and so, you know, I, and, and it was like, you play your part. And I'd be like, okay. And I play my part for like five seconds and I would play the melody again. I get kicked out of band. <laughs> so, uh, I guess that was my first solo, uh, and, 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 and then I, I hated music for a while cause I kept getting kicked out of band. 
Right. I'm like, well, you know, and then I found a great teacher named Wayne Richards in high school and he was the Hemke student. I was talking, and I got right. really like deep and I was not playing jazz. I was not playing, uh, you know, R and B or blues or anything like that. I was playing like, you know, li- classical music, right. uh, for set, you know, contemporary, you know, classical music for saxophone, you know? And, uh, and I dug that man. I, and, and that's where, that's where the 10,000 hours were, were spent. You know, they were, right. they were spent trying to, trying to develop a really, a really, you know, good alto sound and, and, right. and, and, and navigate all of that, all of that repertoire. And that, that's, right. that's frankly where the, where the, where the altissimo kind of developed, because I mean, if you're, it's no joke with the altissimo in, no. in, in, in that literature, you know, absolutely not. You're, you're, <clears throat> you, you have to be facile. You're not just grabbing a high note. Right. Right. Exactly. And and then waiting until people clap. Exactly. Know. And then back to the register. They don't do that. I mean, I, and they totally should in classical music. I mean, you play the <laughs> e bear, and you know, you you play the e bear, and you're like, right? And they should be like this in the middle of the tune, and they don't right. get right. They don't get to do that. Yeah, you get up there and then hold hold the note for like four extra bars, get the house, yes. and then continue yeah. the sonata. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can do that. I, I, I think I think the classical world would totally be cool with that, man. If you just started... I figured I figured when Cranford <laughs> started to go back to that, he would, you know. But he's he's got too much class for that, man. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he um, but no, unbelievable. But... So I, I, you know, but but then again, all this time I'm listening to jazz music. I never really was am studying it seriously, but I, you know, I, I've grown up listening to it, and I grew up like playing along with records. I learned to play, right. you know, music other than classical music by playing along with records, and so. Uh, you know, I started getting back to that. And long story short, um, I, I, I took a detour from music. I went into the corporate <laughs> world and wore a yellow tie and, you know, ate a lot of steak. As and did then, I. Yes. I, right. And then I quit my job because I wanted to quit my job. And the only thing I could think to do was get an MBA. And so that's how you quit your job. Right. right. You don't just quit your job and pick up the saxophone. You quit your job. Just for anyone who's listening, you quit your job, you get an MBA, and then you pick up your saxophone. That's how it works. <laughs> That's not how it works, but <laughs> it's totally how it works. And, <laughs> and, and so I started, I started getting really serious about it and started really studying, you know, and, and, um, you know, thankfully I had some technique and, uh, yeah. And some, and thank God for my dad, you know, exposing me to, you know, to listening. And so I started playing, um, uh, sessions in Chicago and just playing, you know, in clubs and stuff like that. And then, you know, my, my the, 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 the one story that I can tell that actually got me, uh, kind of thinking differently and in a different crowd of musicians was um, I, I was, it was a rainy Sunday and, and it was cold and I had a pizza and a movie. And the last thing I wanted to do was play a gig anywhere. And, uh, but someone called me last minute and they're like, can you play this gig with, you know, in this horrible club that's really, really far away and it's raining and sleeting. And I was about to say no, but I remembered someone saying a long time ago, never say no to a gig. And, I, and so I, I remembered right. that and I said yes to the gig. Anyway, on the gig is a bunch of really good players, but you know, we're going to be playing some Motown stuff and some, you know, it's loungy and whatever. Right. But I recognize the bass player and I can't put my finger on how I know him. Um, and, uh, you know, we start playing and on a break, he's like, Hey man, you, you know, you sound good. I, what's your name? I said, my name is Steve. I said, what's your name? He said, Richard Patterson. Richard Patterson at that time was playing with Miles Davis. Exactly. And, and I'm looking at like, what are you doing? He's like, and the singer was like a dear, dear friend of his, like childhood friend. And, and, and he is just like, whenever I'm in town and, 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 and she has a gig, I'm, I'm on the gig. We're, we're, we're pals. So I was so lucky to run into Richard and he, and became known to him. And then after miles passed, he he's back in town and he puts a band together and he calls me for it. Nice. And that, that is like the, uh, I hope he's not listening cause he's going to want something for this, but you know, Money. Uh, yeah. 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 Right. yeah. But anyway, go on. Yeah. Again, he, you know, yeah. great, yeah. great guy, super classy guy. Yeah. Um, but he, he schooled me, man. He's totally schooled me. And that band, you know, he took, he took what Miles kind of put him through and he kind of, you know, carried that, that on a little bit, that kind right. of like, uh, 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 provocative competency. It's just like taking mm-hmm. you, disrupting you purposefully, mm-hmm. keeping you off of your comfort, so out of your mm-hmm. comfort zone, but in your sphere of competence. Right. 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 Um, yeah. And and that and I grew tremendously from that experience and 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 from that you know cats started to know my name only because like everyone wanted to know who the hell was playing with Richard, right? And so the first uh, you know kind of legit gig that I had was with Bob Mamet. He was an Atlantic Records uh, artist, and then I got to know uh, you know some players through that. Uh, one of the players I got to know uh, in Chicago was playing with a guy named Brian Culbertson, 
introduced me to him. I started playing in Brian's band. Then we started writing music right. together. And then right. he started, you know, kind of uh, 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 encouraging me to to get my own thing together. Right. And, uh, you know, it took a long time. And like from the first demo to the time I got signed was probably like five years. Right. But it's not, you know, you know, not- you know I, I was in the mix with those cats, you know, right. and still it's like, you're not ready. You're not ready. You're not ready. Okay. You're ready. Right. Right. Uh, you know, and so, you know, then and from there, you know, when I got my own thing, I, I did a I did a little tour with Boz Skaggs. That was kind of fun. I, right. I, I, that was a whole other kind of area of growth for me as a musician, because I was suddenly thrust into a kind of a keyboard two chair, like, uh-huh. which was really I was actually telling that story. Like, I, I, I didn't enjoy that gig at all, other than the fact that it was great. And I learned so much about music. But the fact that I was like playing, you know, keyboards a little bit. And and scared completely shitless every gig, right. you know, it was weird, you know. But sure, yeah, I, um, I get that. But yeah, so so that was kind of, and then you know, I was kind of you know off on my own thing and 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 doing you know doing my thing, and and it was uh, it was it was really, really I could trace a lot of it back to that one gig that I didn't say no to because <laughs> right, right. Really, when people say you never know who's going to be on that gig, it is really true. You never know. It, it's a it's just a hundred percent true. I mean. It, <laughs> Most of the time, a gig that you want to say no to, you go to it and you're like, "Wow, I really wish I'd said no to that." Right? Most of the time, exactly. you're, most of the time, you're right. But then there's a gig where you wanted to say no to it, and and it changes your life. Right? It has a, a, amazing impacts, or, or maybe yeah. there's a, a continuum. It can go between one all the way to the other. But yeah, but uh, that it, it, you literally, you, you literally just want to get out there and I mean, when you're when you're young and just just have people hear you if you think that. Uh, they'll like it when they hear you. If you have confidence in that idea, that's yeah. There, there's there's just no other way that it happens, right? Like you're you're uh, you're, you're uh, here are here, here are my goods, right? You're like a you're, you're, you're <laughs> yeah. like a you're like a, a Seventh Avenue. You're like a fabric salesman, basically. Right. right? You come in like right. here are my goods, and that that's that's the way it goes down. Oh yeah, you, I love I love your goods. They look fantastic. I'll have some. So, um, yeah. well that that that's awesome. Yeah, and, and um, I think probably. If my recollection is correct, like uh, from a solo artist perspective, you you had a success uh, initially early and and uh, and kept being successful. If I'm correct, over the course of the uh, the decades, I'll take so, that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean that's that's my casual observation. You can tell me if I'm wrong. But yeah, no that but, that the, the the first I was really lucky because the the first record that that I made um, did really well and it, it kind of came out of the came out of the gate like screaming and it was, right. it was really you know and it was it was one of those things where um you know i swear to god the 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 the, the fewer expectations you have of something the better it ends up becoming you know right. like i was completely naive i didn't know you know i i didn't i didn't know what to i didn't know what to freak out about right. you know when we made that record i had no idea i didn't know all the things that i was supposed to be nervous about worried about Right. Yeah. Right. And right. so, um, you know, I was really lucky in it. And, and we wrote some good music together because, you know, man, your first record, you, you, you're you writing that record all your life, really. Yeah. Um, that, that, and up, and up yeah. until that point, that's correct. Yeah. That's and, correct. It, and it came out at a time where it was a good time for things to come out. And, you know, it's been it's been it's been a cool, you know, ride. That was 1998, man. And, and yeah, and, no, uh, it's, been, it's been a minute, hasn't it? So, yeah. My first record came out in 1994, which is, Damn. you know, I know it's nuts, man. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I don't know what to say about that, but um, other than it's, it's good to still be here doing it. <laughs> but, uh, I, I remember, I remember I was on the road and um, it was back when, remember when airplanes had phones in the uh, armrest? Sure. Yeah. So I remember listening to your, it, 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 it was the record that came. It was like it was something like hurricane. Oh God, what was it called? That hurricane, not hurricane, or it was oh, yeah, Eye of the Storm. Eye of the Storm, yeah. Second, my and second I, and, record, right? And I, and, I, and I remember having it in my in my CD player, right? Right. And, and I don't know if you remember this, but like it was it was while I was in flight, I'm listening to this record, and I picked up the way overpriced, horrible phone in my armrest and called you. Really? I do, yeah. not, I do not remember that. I remember it because it you, you, you paid a lot of money to call me on the phone from an airplane to tell me I did what? To, to tell, tell you that it was what? like that it was the shit. It was like <laughs> I was being blown away. Like there was like, blah, 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 like oh my yeah. god, and I was like so I was so you know it was like I got to call this guy right now, you know. <laughs> And I called you from the plane to tell you what a badass you were. Oh, that's awesome, man. Well, I I, I don't know why I don't remember. I can't that, believe I, I, I'm, I'm, I should I'm, remember I'm, that. Yeah, no, I should. I'm, 
I'm frankly a little insulted that you don't. I don't think you should be. There's there's all sorts of things that I don't remember, and it's not a value. It's not a value judgment. It's uh, it's <laughs> it's, uh, it's a number of factors that uh, arrive at that. So it's not yeah. not a not a commentary yeah. whatsoever. I mean, w- without a doubt, I'm I'm charmed now, as I must have been then, that you called me from a plane. And yeah, yeah. you're like those those. I mean, I never touched those phones in the armrest. That was like they were radioactive because you picked the thing up in like 1999 went on your credit card, right? Oh, yeah. Like basically, yeah. like, before you even called somebody, it was some, some absurd amount of money. So that that is a, a, an amazing compliment that you did that. And, wow, so th- that is a long-ass time ago then, too. That, that if, if, they, if they even had those things, because they've been gone for a long time. They've been gone for a really long time. But, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I think when we met, you were playing with Bob uh, Mavitt. And... Um, and I was with I was co-leading a band with Philippe, and I think that's where we met. That's when we met in Virginia when you were with Bob. Yeah. And uh, and then I, you know, we. I remember you coming to my gig on the East Side in New York, like for for a bunch of years. I did this kind of like it's pro guy jazz at the Metropolitan yeah. Cafe with with uh, Anton Fake from the Letterman Band yeah. and Will Lee sometimes and Joe Carroll and Chris Bodie and I were doing it. And I, I remember you you came in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we we've run into each other. Uh, different ways in different places, and then of course now every time I'm in uh, in Minneapolis with with uh, with an act, we hang out, right? Yep. We, I think yep. the last is it. Am I right that the la- the last time we hung out, it was just like obscenely cold. It was it was absurd. It was it was like yeah, you came, like you came zero degrees, or, right? I mean, just, yeah, you just, came in January, man. Was- huge mountains of ice and snow around the hotel, as I remember, right? Well, that was actually they were, that was ice sculptures. You came during the, <laughs> the- oh. So- I no, guess. I'm not. I'm not. I'm actually not kidding. You no, can't I, I, they, bring well, they, uh, they must have been abstracted. I thought they were just mounds, or, or I have a terrible <laughs> eye for art. One of the two. But, uh, hey, here's a great a great question from Richard, our friend Richard, uh, across the pond. How did the sax pack come about? That's oh, a man. good question. Did Jeff, yeah, a, Jeff, and Kim. Yep. Yeah. Sax pack came about. Because, yeah, Jeff willed it to happen. It was he willed it. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um. He he. I, I think he, he was he was hanging out with um. Uh, acoustic alchemy. He was he was touring with them, and, and I, I think I think Miles Gilderdale. They were they were maybe maybe they were watching like a uh, a Rat Pack kind of movie or something like that on a day off, and and uh, I think Miles. The way that Jeff tells the story, Miles said something like, uh, you know, you should you know you should be the sax pack, and 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 Jeff kind of took him seriously, right? And uh, and he called me, and he called uh, 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 Kim Waters, and 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 I, you know, we had known of each other. It was kind of like we'd run into each other. Hey, you know, I thought he was a great player, but we'd never really hung out, and I never really you guys, hung out with him. You, you, you weren't boys. You weren't. You no, weren't, right? Okay. No, but but Jeff put a, put this together, and the next thing we know, we had a gig in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and that was the first time we really met, and we met baggage claim. That was in it. But wow. the thing that was the thing that was cool about it was it was like, I mean, when when we got together, it was like we've known each other for years. I mean that that moment, it was just like. I kind of didn't really know them from Adam other than, you know, you know how it is. You, you, you brush by somebody on a, you know, backstage. Yeah. They, it's, it's that, it's that we're all, we're all in the same business thing, that, that, that right. level of friendship that, um, that you recognize. Yeah. So, colleagues, yeah. but not, right. you know, but right. we, we, it was, it was, you know, it, we hit it off like crazy and, right. and, and it was, you know, a good, you know, 10 something years. And we're still doing, you know, one, one of these days when we get back to playing mm-hmm. music, we'll, yeah. We'll get back to doing that, but yeah, that's how it came about. It was kind of started out as a joke, and then Jeff took it seriously, and there it was. That's that's great. I mean, it. Uh, I, I the, the, you guys have a lot of simpatico as personalities, so yeah. Definitely. Uh, whether whether that was pre-existing or you just got lucky, that, that's uh, that's awesome. So, um, <laughs> I'll let you take that one. Which which one was that? The sponsored by Jameson? Yeah, I'll let you take that. I'll let, I'll let you handle that. So. <laughs> <laughs> or or was it the Trevor? Or, or was it the Trevor James question? I saw. No, I, 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 oh, I think I know what Richard is referring to. But oh, okay. Oh, yeah. uh, um, uh, on the um, on the horn. So uh, for for Mike. Uh, so look here. Here's here's the straight deal. Like I, I I love the Trevor James horn. I basically I play it on the road in certain situations. When I'm home, I play my six. I have one of Michael Brecker's Mark sixes, and uh, for a variety of reasons, that that's the horn that I'm I'm going to play. This is on tenor, um, but uh, having said that, I'm an abs- I'm absolutely a fan of the Trevor James product. They they do a great job uh, quality controlling those instruments and putting a lot of 
time and love into uh, them when when they come over from from the east. So uh, whether it's in my you see it in my hands or not in a particular circumstance, I absolutely recommend it as a product. So, and I'll pass that over to you, Steve. You want to answer that question what? from Mike? Yeah, I think I think they're fantastic saxophones. You know, I I, I too own a you know a, a, a vintage Selmer. It was my dad's. I'm never giving it up. It's a it's a super balanced action, right. five thousand series. It's incredible. Never, you know, um, but I find myself you know playing the Trevor James you know most of the time, right. um, and it's funny because the, how I got turned on to it was actually Andy Brush, who's a, a buddy of ours and he yes. was a buddy of yours before yes. me, and he. Yes. He introduced himself at one of my shows and he's, he said, you know, I'm a friend of Andy Snitzer. So immediately right. I told him to get the hell out of there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, you know, he, he's, he was just like, you know, and I'm, and I'm, I'm working with Andy and Andy's playing this horn and would you be interested in checking it out? I'm like, well, right. you know, I, of course I want to play a, you know, check out a horn that Andy's checked out. I mean, you know, uh, and it, and it was a really great, a, a really great connection because I really, really do adore the saxophone. I mean, I, I, did, yeah. I really think it, it, it feels great. It sounds great. Is that what you were playing tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds, sounds fantastic. Sounds yeah, fantastic. I'm actually playing. I'm actually playing the one that Chris Bullock gave back. <laughs> ah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I so that. yeah, I think, so, I, think yeah. I, I think I took in that horn initially. Yeah, I think I, that's the only one. Only time I met the cat, I was like, "Here." He's like, "Thanks," and that was yeah. it. But uh, and then, and you know how I got it was, uh, you know, he he was giving it up, and so I was in New York. So Dave Dave Mann went and met him. And, then, and it was probably the same thing. Hey man, here, I'll <laughs> right. take it and out. And, then, <laughs> and he shipped and he shipped it back to me. Yeah. Oh, that's Pretty cool. Funny. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Well, they're they're great instruments, and um, and yeah. uh, I'm, I'm happy to be associated. So, well, well, that that's that's awesome, man. I mean, you you you're uh, you're in my estimation, you're you're totally crushing it, and mm -hmm. uh, and and so sounding sounding as as good as I've ever heard you sound, and. Uh, I don't want to revisit this uh, at too much length, but um, thank you for saving my ass tonight. That was that was like literally epic and a kind of a de well, no, I'm not even kidding. Like a demonstration of your your uh, your professionalism and and experience as a, as an entertainer and player, right? Like I, I'm literally over here fumbling with gear. No one can hear me, and you just came in and did like an awesome, righteous job of grabbing the mic and then and then crushing oh, dude, the basketball man. performance. So so I, I'm in your debt. I'm hoping. Uh, I'll, I will say this, man. I have Tom Scott next week. So if it's got to happen, I'd rather it be with you than with Tom <laughs> Scott because, you know, we're, we're boys. And, and Tom Scott's kind of like, right, like like he's of that next generation up. He's kind of a legend of the saxophone. So I, yeah. it, it, I, I'm going to be uh, – I'm going to be teching the living s out of this computer before next week's show. That that's never <laughs> yeah. happened before. So anyway, but I'm, 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 uh, it's I'm not happy. good, man. You listen, I'm, you would have, you would have done it for me. <laughs> I would have, I would have absolutely, I, I would have absolutely. So I, uh, my Daniel beh behind the scenes. Ah, Myron's got a question. Awesome, Steve. Do you still play alto other doubles? Do you know Myron? No, Steve? I don't know Myron. So my, my I, I love Myron. Myron lives in Jersey. Myron lives in Jersey, and Myron is a, is a total badass. Like he plays with Brian Blade, oh, right? Crap. Like he wow. has his own gigs. Like he's 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 in that sort of like jazzier kind of world, right? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But, but he he is willing to like come right out and admit to liking players in this world, right? And like he's he's here a lot of weeks, and I always joke that I'm like his like like a little secret that he couldn't tell Brian Blade about or something, you know, would be like, he'd be shamed or something like that. <laughs> but but uh, I can't help tell that story every time I see Myron is here. But, but anyway, uh, yeah, Myron, my, check him out. Like he's, 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 oh, absolutely. he's completely a crusher, but anyway, wow. so question from Myron, do you still play alto other doubles? What's, what's your scene that way? Yeah. So I, I, I definitely play alto, but you know, honestly, it's like, if I'm playing alto, I'm playing classical music. No kidding. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because you know, I, I just, you know, um, you know, there are people whose voice is alto. Like when you play alto, you, you know, it feels like very, very, very natural for you. It's like you're, you're, you're singing through that instrument. Yes. Um, and and I don't. I, it's almost like an extension of the range for you. You play alto, you play tenor, you play soprano, and it's just an extension of the range, right? Right. Yes. For 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 me, like because I I I like was so you know. Uh, in 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 the trenches with 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 an alto saxophone playing you know classical, like I have you know recorded it and I and I've been fairly uh, uh, okay with with the sound that I produce. Yeah. 
Right. But it 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 does it 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 doesn't sound it doesn't feel effortless for me to play the alto in that context. It I see. In the classical world, you know, that that it's like feels that's where I, where my voice is on alto. Right. Oh, that's interesting. weird, right? It is. I'd love to hear. I'd love to hear that how that how that uh, you know manifests itself. Uh, I mean, for me, I, I was an alto player first, and like the whole tenor thing that I have, where where I, people like to some extent, people hear it and they're like, I don't know what horn he's playing because because it's like it, it has kind of like the tessitura and 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 the you know the, the sonic imprint of a tenor, but it's all up here. Like mm -hmm. it's all it's all like up a fifth. Right yeah, from, yeah. from tenor players and and kind of singing in that alto way and that's that just that just kind of became like my thing moving from alto which was my first instrument to tenor right yeah, and yeah. and and define this this tenor space that people sort of identify as mine right which is which is that that weird intersection um, mm -hmm. but but you have you have a different kind of story of your migration from alto to tenor I well shit man I think you should you should like figure out a way to to present that to the world, man. Maybe you could do like a Branford thing, right? Maybe you could roll back and get it, play some classical music and record it. Yeah, I've always been, I've always been thinking about doing that. I'd have to practice a whole lot. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, well, yeah, I mean, that, you know, because, you know, that I, I do, I do try to keep it up, you know, and someone asked what, you know, of course, if, you know, if I'm playing sax, if I'm playing classical music, I'm playing a, I'm playing a Selmer, you know, super action right, series right. too. Right. And, right. and my left arm goes, and I, you know, I put, I put my arm up like that. No. Right. Right, <laughs> classical pose. I got, yeah, I got my, I got my, you know, S eighty. You know, I'm like, I'm like yeah, no, I, I see, man. That's, you know? that's, that's all. Yeah, you're, 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 uh, you're, you're not, you're not kidding, right? <laughs> um, you can, I, I do not have a classical mouth or mouthpiece anymore. Like, oh I, man, I, I, absolutely not. But uh, here's Jesse. Your alto was amazing on your Stay a While album. You're oh, playing, I was playing, playing a beat right. store. Yeah, I, and and it's funny because it, on that album I was playing an alto that I bought from David Sanborn. It okay. was a, yeah, it was a it was it was a rare kind of prototype um, 62 gold plated that they made for him. Wow. And he and he sold it and I bought it uh, and uh, I was playing a Beachler seven on that on that. Yeah. Wow. Well, on that, that first that first tune, that first single. That, I mean, that that's uh, that's not a classical mouthpiece. So. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Hey Tim, thank you. Other than the comfort of your studio making a record, do you guys like to hear yourself back on a live recording, or do you nitpick every little thing? I, I nitpick every little thing. Uh, live recording, studio recording, practicing, like uh, no matter what, I'm 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 on my case. I mean, it um, it uh, for me, it, it's a thing that has a good end game, but it's not pretty in the trenches, right? Like I'm I'm definitely I'm definitely pretty hard on myself and and. Uh, that that's that's how I do it. So, what do you think about that, Steve? What's your, what's do, your do, you know, do you know Do you know Do you know Tim George, uh, Andy? I don't know. If I do. Oh man, Tim George is a phenomenal, incredible bass player, and even a better human. He's he lives in uh, in Florida, and he's played gigs with me all over. Oh, awesome! Place. Okay, so and, and and also everyone else, like he's 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 fabulous. So it's so he actually knows the answer to this question that he's asking you. Well, you know, because he because all <laughs> you, know, you know anyone who knows me is just like all I all I'll ever say is, oh God, I suck. I mean, yeah. like, I listen back, and she's like, oh Jesus, oh God, oh God, please, no one record that. Um, yeah, it's hard listening back. I mean, I, I don't mind listening back to studio albums because, you know, I've, I've done all of the, uh, you know, um, you know, self monitoring, you know, in, in the process of recording it and yeah, you craft so it to it's, what it's, you want it to be. Yeah. So it's not as horrible to listen back to that as a live, you know, in the moment thing where you're just like, God, what was I thinking? You yeah. know? Right. But, uh, Tim never makes those mistakes. He always sounds amazing. Well, some people are, are, are lucky like that, right? They, uh, they just always, I know. Sound, they always sound good. And, and, and some people, we're not. You and I aren't. That's the way it goes. <laughs> um, here's a good question. Have you ever dropped your saxophone while playing? Yeah, that's an awesome avatar, by the way. Um, no. You know, the, the answer, I, I, you know, I've i done, I, I had an unbelievably upsetting experience. Uh, I was going, I was at JFK. I was going to, uh, where was I going? <laughs> Jacksonville, right? Uh, to play the Jacksonville Jazz Festival. And I go through security and I like, you know, it's super early in the morning and I'm not thinking, right? And I grab the horn off the belt and something happens with the strap, like one end gives off and the horn goes like doink on the ground. The bottom of the horn hits the pavement, right, at, at JFK. And I, I go over, I, I, I 
pick up my things. I'm on the other side of security. I sit down, I take it out and it, it, you know, I'm screwed, right? Like there's a, there's a dent in the bottom. It plays down to about E or E flat mm. and then it's gone. So it's sort of half plays. And uh, I got down there and huge groove, bless his heart, uh, set me up with the Kurzweil, not Kyle worth people. Kyle Worth people for, for the day. Wow. Kurzweil, yeah, woo. Uh, set me up with the Kyle Worth people for the day, and they 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 lent, they loaned me a horn for the day, and I was able to play the gig. But but so I I, I did drop my horn, uh, not while playing, but while going through airport security, and uh, not not cool, not awesome. You ever drop your horn, Steve? Well, now I mean I'm now I'm afraid to do anything because you know if I say no, then it's like tomorrow I'm going to. <laughs> No, he's just tell the truth, man. I'm sure. I'm sure uh, no, I, I've never, I've never dropped my horn. Amazing. Um, I, I've seen, I've seen an epic drop of a horn um, uh, on on video when Jeff Kasha was, you know, the the the, the next strap ring. Oh, I've like, seen, I've seen that clip. That kind of went viral a little bit, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then he just, he just let it go and picked up his alto and just started. <laughs> You know, and he like transposed in like a, in like like milliseconds. He's like, well, and he just you yeah. Know, that was, you know, that was, that was an, another example of professionalism. There was no, you didn't see any freak out, any, any no, like, just, like like scene on stage. You just kind of pivoted and handled it and went forward. So yeah, that's uh, totally uh, that that's cool. Um, all right, well, let's, I'm gonna just put this up. So, uh, Myron, thank you, but I, I don't know why that ends in a question mark. <laughs> Everyone knows how much I love you, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, thank, thank you, Myron. It's, it's awesome that you're here, man. You're, you're such a great uh, musician and saxophone player. It's great that you're here most of these weeks. Um, well, anyway, if, if, folks, if there's any other questions for Steve, uh, hit me right away. Um, otherwise, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let him get on to his supper in, yeah, uh, in, in, in Minneapolis. Um, and I want to I want to I want to say hey to uh, uh, um, uh, Mackenzie Morgan. She is she is a former student of mine, and she like popped in. So I just wanted to like shout. Oh, out to her. awesome, awesome! Here's here's Brian Dunn. Oh he's, man, he's a drummer from New York. I think he's playing on your new stuff. That's what yeah. we have to do. Yeah. Thank you, Brian, because you just you just saved the day. So Steve is working on new music, and uh, right now, and you'll have a record out uh, in the spring. I'm going to guess something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably in spring. <clears throat> Fantastic. So it's, yeah, it should be done for a minute, but in, in a minute, but yeah. Right. Yeah. So for for all you Steve fans, uh, myself included, uh, there'll be new music out in the spring, which is awesome. Here's Gary. Do you ever, do you ever play baritone? The baritone seems to come up every week. Um, and, and we discuss it. You know, Dave Koz is like secretly a very good baritone player, which is annoying. And uh, wow, yeah. And uh, and w when Marienthal was here, we we played a cut of, of his from his new re uh, record with Randy, right? And there's oh. all this saxophone uh, section stuff going on in the background, and baritone just you know killing it on the baritone. And I said, I said, hey, do, you know, do you own a baritone? Like you sound great on that. He's like, no, I um I borrow it from a guy in L.A. I have a friend in LA and whenever I need to play baritone, he lends it to me. I was like, do you have a mouthpiece? It's like, no, I, I use his mouthpiece. Oh my God. <laughs> like, you know? Wow. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a studio project, but he really he sounded fantastic. So baritone seems to come up every week, but for you, Steve Cole, do you ever play yeah. baritone? You know, I, I used to love playing baritone. I played it, of course, at Northwestern when I was in, uh, you know, saxophone quartets. Uh, I played it in jazz band when I was in high school. I had, you know, the requisite Berg Larson, you know, Barry mouthpiece, right. you know, and uh, but but you know, I lent my Berg to uh, uh, a, someone, you know, about I don't know, twenty five years ago, and I never got it back. So no, I haven't played baritone since then. Someone someone ran off with your mouthpiece, and you were like, yeah, screw it, that's it, I'm I out. It. Yeah, yeah, that's, it's a sign from God. Right. Yeah, plus I could buy like ten altos for the price of one. <laughs> Who's who's not going to do that? Yeah, I, I hear you. I I have one. I don't I don't I, I break it out in the home when I, if it's a if it comes into play in the funk in, in the context of a recording project mm -hmm. that I'm doing or something like that. But I don't ever yeah. take it out. Don't take it in public. Um, uh, Andy Brush seems to keep coming up. Steve, what's your favorite post gig cocktail? Um, any glass of alcohol. <laughs> So that I think that that's a fairly wide berth, <laughs> Andy. I, so. I'm a I, I'm a I I, I do enjoy uh, you know I enjoy bourbon uh, very much and uh, I also enjoy a, a nice uh, nicely crafted Manhattan. So um, 
You know? All right. So the next time you're over in the UK, look for Andy Brush to uh, have that sorted for you. And he will Absolutely. sort it because he sorts things out. That's what he does. And, and um, I'm looking forward to get back to playing gigs so I can start drinking again. Right. <laughs> I, okay. Yeah. You could probably do that without the gig, couldn't you? You're on a tight leash, my friend. You're not allowed to do that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, uh, here's another question from Gary. Steve, do you teach? Yeah, I teach all kinds of things, uh, but um, I, I do I do actually have a uh, position as a professor in, at a at a institution of higher learning. So I teach uh, students about entrepreneurship, and I teach them about the music industry and about entertainment industry, and I also have some saxophone students. Oh, awesome! Okay, that cool. I teach to play classical music. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? Yeah, it's true. Really. So you, you have saxophone students, but you, you this not jazz saxophone instruction, classical. I have a, I have a couple. I have a couple who you know who who are, are jazz players, but you know the, the my 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 ma the majors that I'm teaching are are uh, uh, fantastic, man. So you, so you you've you've kept this uh, sax the classical saxophone uh, association uh, li alive in you as part of you for the for the duration. Yeah. Was yeah, it was interesting because, you know, I started I started teaching, you know, saxophone about 10 years ago. I hadn't been teaching very much at all. And uh, when that happened, um, that's when I kind of got back into it. That's when I started kind of reengaging in, right. in that in that world and that in that right. repertoire. Yeah, right. Right. That's super cool. It's funny. The um, <clears throat> the song that I was going to play tonight has it's, it's kind of a classical thing, a little bit of a, a classical Sanborn classical thing on the verse. Right. And, mm -hmm. and I chose it because of this. Uh, commonality that we have, and I'm just wondering if that was a, a statement from the universe. You don't don't do that, Andy. Yeah, don't, don't do that. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> don't don't, I'm, do, don't do that no more. <laughs> I'll bet you. I'll bet you crushed that. I mean, because when you were studying with Fred, you were playing that. You were playing that. Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. That, that, I, that canon, right? I mean, so yeah, absolutely. And I, I had a good year there, and it was very informative in terms of technical things. But but yeah. I kind of. Uh, you know, immediately realized, I, I think probably exactly like David Sanborn did. I, I don't, I've never talked to him about it at great length. We, we've mentioned the fact that we both went there, but mm -hmm. I kind of was like, well, you're in the wrong place, aren't you? Um, so you should, you should probably move on out of here. And, and by the next uh, year, I was at Miami where I stayed yeah. for, for the duration, which was, so you were, you were, you were smart. You went to, you went to another music school. I, when I, when I, when, when I had that realization, I was like, you're in the wrong place, aren't you? I just, I just moved to the, you know, another part of the university and majored in well, economics. You know, <laughs> another way of putting it is that I needed the music school to get good enough to be doing this and you didn't need the music school. So you studied economics and here you are still sounding like you sound. So, uh, all yeah, right, whatever you, you know, need to say. We, we're, we're, we're gonna, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to keep turning. I'm, I'm going to turn it around on you, man. I'm going to, I'm going to throw that stuff back at you. Uh, all right, man. <laughs> um, here, I studied with Fred Myron. I did. I did. I had, I had a very mm -hmm. intense year at Northwestern and, uh, and, and it was, uh, it, it was very, very. Uh, I wouldn't change the progression uh, for the world. That that having that first year at Northwestern and then the rest of the time at Miami uh, is uh, kind of definitional on on who I am. Right? It, it's a. Uh, it kind of describes the whole thing. And probably without that year of study with Hemke, something would be different. I would say. So uh, anyway, that 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 is true. Um, okay, here's a good question from Paul. Oh, my, uh, you know, it, it, so there's two of them that I like, and I don't remember which, what number, you know, the one that goes, anyway, that one. And right. then there was that, that first one that's like, like super lyrical, that, that one. So those two, I like a lot. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> when, in the people that I'm speaking to, it's a mantra of mine. I think the guests that I have bear it out. Like you want, you want to just do the things that occur to you to do. Right. So I'm, I'm going to say that part of your success, right. Is your, your willingness to keep incorporating that interest, right. Into your game plan. Right. And not, uh, feel any kind of strange about it because now you're in, in jazz and R and B and, uh, uh, or maybe someone's telling you, who you know, that's not a cool thing to do or whatever. Like it, you, it, it seems to me you you sort of like, and I like this in people. Um, you just you stayed with the things that interest you 
didn't matter what the mix was. If it was weird, if it wasn't weird, it, it didn't matter. You're, you're just going to do your thing and not be talked out of it, not be moved out of its way. So um, if that's totally wrong, you can tell me, but I'm, no, I'm it's, it's, it's not. It's, so. No, that's, that's super accurate. And, but you know, the thing is like so many, so many players, you know, uh, have some kind of class. I mean, look at, look at, look at Branford. Yes. Um, I've also caught, you know, Kirk Whalen playing, you know, uh, Boza etudes and caprices backstage. Right. Right. Uh, you studied with Fred. David right. studied with Fred. Right. I studied with Fred. You know, I right. mean, uh, right. you know, that this this is like, you know, a, a, a really important part, I think, of uh, just developing confidence and technique um, control, you know. Uh, to to be able uh, to be able to be deliberate in different ranges and key structures. Uh, I mean, uh, absolutely, know. absolutely. It's like it's a uh, it's it's a uh, you know a true professional presentation on the instrument. And I don't think it has to come from classical study, but I think if that's if that's something that you're interested in, right? You keep returning to it. That, that even if it's not the thing that you're doing, that's that's awesome. It's part of your cocktail somehow mm -hmm. in a way that's informing the you right and, and yeah. like, ma making your individuality and that's important right that, that that's that's kind of the thing that i'm on every week so wh yeah. what, whatever that is you know it's a it's a certain conversation with dave cause it's a, you know about his mix and it's a totally different conversation with you about your mix but that one ring that one thing reads true it's kind of just like hey this is these are the things that i care about and i'm gonna do them and i don't mm -hmm. care what anybody else thinks about it right this is what i think about it so here we go wayne your oh my god your childhood teacher showed up with the oh answer to the throwing so, I, I, yeah, it's so, I, I, like, so I, like, I like the picture he's kind of looking at you like number 12 and number 13 steve why don't you remember <laughs> yeah because and what he's why he has that written down is because he probably has like a journal from back when he was just like okay he you know he crapped all over these two <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I better reassign them for next week and like like lower the tempo down to seventy two again. You well, know? what I think it is is he's got like he's got like five months of lessons and all it is is furling twelve and thirteen over and over and over and over again because you're not getting it. Something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's possible, but I actually uh, don't believe that at all. But <laughs> the 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 thing the thing about Wayne is that you know Wayne Wayne was the guy like if if you know for better or for worse Wayne, uh, for better or for worse if if I hadn't met him I wouldn't be playing music today. Um, he, 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 he came at the recommendation of a band director I had in, 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 uh, high school. And I think they knew each other at Northwestern because Wayne studied at Northwestern with, with Brett, I think if I'm getting this right. And then went off to Bordeaux to study and then came back, you know, at, in like the world's baddest ass on saxophone period. Right. Um, and he, he was a, 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 just a phenomenal influence, an incredible teacher, great exemplar in terms of just. Uh, you know, the combination of technique and sound and artistry and, and you know, like talking about all the right things. Right. Um, as a matter of fact, when, when he moved uh, to a different city, um, I was living, you know, in, in the suburbs of Chicago at the time. And I was, when I was in high school and, and he lived pretty close to me, but then he, he moved out to, you know, a little, f quite a bit further away. And I remember um, my Sunday was spent uh, basically taking three buses uh, to get to a shopping mall that was near his house. And he would, he would pick me up at the shopping mall and bring me to his place. And then we would have our lesson. And then I would repeat the process again. Right. So the three buses didn't even quite get you there. The, the, the three, three buses, buses got you close. Right. right. And then, and then I have to say that one, one day uh, I actually showed up um, and this was later on, like right at the end of my senior year when I was about to you know go to college and I had been to a, a fraternity party that on Saturday night before, and I showed up a, a shade of kind of bluish, greenish gray. Yeah. Uh, because I was not feeling very well. And, uh, and I, and he, he, uh, he gave me some bromo seltzer and let me sleep it off. That wow. was, that was, but that was one of the most, you know, the best lessons I ever had. Right. <laughs> don't do that shit. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't show up hungover to something that's important. But, but yeah, no, Wayne, Wayne, uh, if you know, man, what a, what a, uh, a privilege it was to be able to study with this guy. So Wayne, thank you for showing up, man. Now I'm horribly embarrassed. <laughs> well, you shouldn't be, man. You should not be embarrassed. Uh, well, Hey man. All right. So I, it's all, it's all, you know, it's on the way to nine 30 where you are and we've been hanging out for a good while. So <clears throat> I'm gonna let you do your thing, but thanks for coming in. Sounded, yeah. ama it sounded amazing. It's so great to hang as always. And, uh, you know, we didn't, we didn't, uh, we didn't say anything too off color or, or too, uh, 
I hope do, not. Do, I, don't, I don't think so. I think we got, because when we hang out, like when we're just, when we're off mic hang out, we, we riff and, you know, <laughs> we, we can get in there. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, uh, I'm looking forward to your, to your new music in the spring and yeah, uh, thanks, continue man. to be well. Say hi to your wife for me. I will. And, you, too. and, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll wrap to you soon. So Daniel, let Steve do his thing and then I'll, I'll wrap up the show. Thanks a lot, Andy. It was, it was great. Great to great, see you. Great, great to hear see, you, man. Great to see you, Steve. All right. See you, buddy. Take care of yourself. All right, everyone. That's uh, that's the, uh, Steve Cole, incredible musician and and, uh, and and human being. Great hang. And <clears throat> I always like chatting with him because because we, we do. We have so much in common. And in addition to that uh, crazy way in which we met, which I, I, I believe in that kind of stuff, like the, the universe uh, had us meet somehow in that really weird way. I've never been checked into someone else's hotel room before. Maybe you, you folks have, but that's the only time it ever happened to me. And, and I was checked into Steve, Steve's room. Uh, so uh, anyway, um, I'm going to plug my album one more time higher. Uh, it's for all of you that have checked it out. I'm really proud of it. I hope you'll check it out and uh, see what I'm up to. Uh, definitely check me out on uh, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all three or any portion of those that you want to uh, check me out on. I'm, I'm doing posting content and, and, uh, and pictures and, and uh, saying hello, what have you. So next week, I'm super excited about this. We've got Tom Scott coming in and that is like, you know, I, I've kind of been, I've been talking to my peer group all along uh, in, in the five times that we've done this. And Tom Scott is a legend to me. So Tom Scott is in that, in that, uh, class of people that when I was a teenager, I looked out into the world and saw this guy doing what he was doing. And with just, I, I, I you know, I, re, I remember listening to Deacon Blues, right? I remember listening, uh, I, I'm sorry, Black Cow and, uh, and thinking like, what the hell is going on? Like, th this is a long form solo at the end of this song, it's Steely Dan. And uh, this guy's playing like, he's playing 64 bars and it's perfect, right? Like, like, the, the, the melodic development, the phrasing, the, 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 the control, the, the groove, the, the soul, the style, like how, how could you possibly play that long? Right. And that, and that perfectly. So I'm going to ask him that next week. I really, uh, I'm kind of a, like, what I want him to tell me is that it was a whole lot of punching in and then Donald Fagan assembled it and all that. But what he's probably going to tell me is, is it was like one or two takes, something like that. So anyway, I'm, uh, I'm super psyched for next week to have Tom in. And uh, after that, we'll take a break for Thanksgiving. But I hope you'll join me next week and uh, for Tom Scott. And I, I promise you uh, that that shit that happened with my computer tonight will not happen next week. And uh, I will perform. I couldn't perform uh, Miracle tonight, so I'll play two tunes next week on alto to make that right. And uh, thanks for hanging in uh, with that. I apologize for that technical snafu, but uh, but it, it will not happen next week. And uh, oh, Richard. Thank you, my friend. So, Richard, I'm pretty sure now it is now it's 3:30 in the morning, right? So, uh, yeah, I think you got to go to sleep, man, because I'm sure you have like shows to do and, and stuff like that tomorrow. So, I it, it's it's an honor that you're here. Really, I'm I'm just charmed every week that you're here. And and to all of you that are coming in, saxophone players and people that I know and people from different parts of the planet, it's, it's so gratifying to do this. Uh, hey, Aaron, thank you, thank you so much. Um, it's uh, it's really amazing to do this and and, and gratifying to know that you guys uh, are enjoying the conversations uh, with my with my peers and you know we uh, keep it in that it's it's a music space but it's definitely a saxophone player uh, space. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate that. And uh, and and <laughs> Myron says I should play three or four tunes next week. All right, Myron, I'm gonna think that over. I'll definitely do two. I gotta leave a I gotta leave a little space for Tom to do his thing too, but. Uh, but I will, I will make that right. I will make that right. Uh, I'll make that right. Anyway, thanks for being here, everybody. We'll see you next week. Uh, take care of yourself. Stay, stay safe. And I'll see you next Thursday night. All right, Daniel, take me out of here. Night, everybody.